Hey everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, today is day 10 of the plant based bundle. This is a bundle, meaning a lot of things ebooks, courses, videos of awesome plant based vegan contributors bundled together for the ridiculous low price of $50. If you bought each thing separately, it would cost almost $1,400. But just for this period of 10 days, we're offering it at, I believe it's 98% off. And today I have one of the bundle contributors. Her name is Jackie Ackerberg, and she's going to be making some of the recipes from her offering in the bundle. This is her first time on the show. So please give her a warm Chef AJ Live welcome. Hi, Jackie. It's nice to meet you. So nice to meet you. Thank you for having me. I'm thrilled to be here. Well, I'm so happy that we got to do this with the bundle. I mean, I've heard of you before. I actually, because we were both at Plant Stock. Or, or, yes. or, and so that's when I first heard of you. So even before we get into these wonderful recipes you have, maybe you could just tell us your, your story about when you became vegan or plant-based and why, because our audience loves to know. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you so much. And it's funny, I had heard of you as well. And then Rip um, spoke so highly of you that I kind of took a deeper dive on your work and was just very impressed. So it's really nice to connect finally. Um, and yeah, I appreciate the warm welcome. I am the creator of Jack Fruitful Kitchen and author of the Clean Vegan Cookbook. Um, it was just published in January of this year. So that is my all plant-based book, um, oil-free as well for 59 out of 60 recipes. And um, I started my plant-based journey about five years ago. I was mostly plant-based my entire life. I didn't enjoy the taste or the feeling of eating meat or animal products. But um, like many of us, at one time, I was still eating eggs. I would eat some fish. Um, you know, friends love a good cheese board. So I would indulge in some dairy from time to time. But I just found myself suffering with um, a lot of breakouts, a lot of the digestive issues, um, and just kind of getting sick often and feeling just inflamed or foggy or noticing puffiness in my face, um, a lot of allergies, asthma, nothing I couldn't live with, but just a, I'm like, why do I feel this way? So it was 2018. My husband and I watched a documentary and he was like, we should go vegan for a month. See how we feel. Like, okay, well, it's going to be easy for me. I'm like already 98% vegan, but let's do it. And we both felt incredible. Um, I kept with it after 30 days. He mostly did as well. But I realized that all of my allergies and asthma were going away. I wasn't having any breakouts. My digestion was completely normal and healthy. And um, I no longer had like, the bloating and pain that I was experiencing. So I've always been a a lover and of the kitchen. Um, my parents owned a catering company when I was growing up. So I'd always help them cook. And I started creating these recipes and the, my Instagram was actually a kind of a COVID project. Um, I'm like, I'm going to pour all of my time and energy into this, try to grow my following. And it really took off, wrote a book a couple of years later, and here we are. Well, I love that it was your husband's idea because often yeah. it's the it's the gentlemen that are harder sometimes to convince. Did he stay it after the 30 days? Yeah, you know, it's funny. Um, I remember it was like we did it for 30 days solid, both of us, like no slip ups. And then we went to his hometown that weekend afterwards, like with all his buddies. And he's like, I, I think I'm going to like fall off a little bit for this weekend. But he felt terrible. And now, I mean, at home, he eats vegan like other than eggs, I mean, he'll eat eggs a couple times a week, but other than that, like 99% of the time, unless we're like at a friend's for dinner or he might indulge if we're out at a restaurant, but every single time he's like, do you have digestive enzymes? I don't feel good. This is not well, good. Why does he keep punishing himself like that if he knows he feels better? <laughs> I know it's one of those things, but you gotta live and learn, I guess. Well, I, I think that's great. Also, what I love about your story is that you didn't say, okay, I'm going to be vegan the rest of my life. When people put that pressure on themselves to be perfect and then they slip up, they beat themselves up. But he, I love the idea of he does what Dr. Lyle says. He did an experiment. Let's just do it for 30 days and see. I've never met anybody that didn't feel better though. Absolutely. And that's, that's the truth of it. And I think, you know, anyone who's considering this lifestyle, depending on what they're starting from, it can be really intimidating or really overwhelming or really unsustainable. Um, and especially when you consider 
because we we eat clean vegan, like we're eating whole foods, plants, we're not doing all the artificial substitutes or fake meats or anything like that, which, you know, I think those serve a great purpose for people, but I don't feel great when I eat those either. And I think when people are super new to plant-based eating um, and they are walking through the stores, like, okay, that says vegan on it. That says vegan on it. I probably need all these things when really it's like, just eat plants, just eat real food. And you're going to look and feel your best. You're going to love the food you're eating. It's going to combat cravings. Like it's just, it's amazing what it changes as you know. Yeah. So you said your Instagram was a COVID project. The name is, is, is intriguing. Tell us about the name of it and why you named it that. Yeah. So Jack Fruitful Kitchen is the name. And it's funny, one of my dear friends, I was, um, I started it actually before COVID, but I only had like a hundred followers. And it was one of those things where I would make a dish, I'd make up a recipe and whether I serve it to my friends or family or my husband, um, a month or two later, someone would be like, Hey, can you, can you make that again? Or can you send me that recipe? I'm like, I have no idea what I did. So originally, 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 it just started as a place for me to archive my recipes, play around with food photography. Um, and when I was talking to my friend about the name, you know, one of my favorite meat substitutes is jackfruit. My name is also Jackie. Um, I feel like eating more plants is very fruitful. It gives you a lot of nourishment and gifts to your life. So Jack Fruitful just kind of came together as a punny little fun name. I, I love that. I love, do you like both the fresh, the ripe and the unripe jackfruit? Yes. Do you? Yes. And they're totally different though. They don't taste totally anything different. like. Yeah. Well, that's like people are always like, do you ever buy the entire melon fresh? I'm like, well, no. I first of all, don't have a family to feed a hundred pounds of fruit to. <laughs> also the ripe fresh melon is so different than the canned or refrigerated or frozen varieties you can get. It's just, I mean, I feel like the fresh um, ripe version tastes almost like, you know, mango, pineapple. It tastes like juicy To me, it tastes like juicy fruit gum. Yes. Yeah. That, That's it, how it, I would it describe it. Yeah, it's so sweet and almost, um, you know, naturally kind of syrupy with its juiciness and fruitiness where the young version doesn't have hardly any taste at all. It's just a fibrous plant that picks up anything you flavor it with. Yeah, it's so cool. I love it yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's really fun. It can be, it can be, you can make like poor carne, you can make carnitas and pork. Yeah. pork. I mean, it's like, you know, people don't need meat. They need all the flavor that the meat goes with. Totally. And that's, I think what really like when you can take my, one of my favorite recipes, this is in my book. Um, it's my Chipotle barbecue jackfruit taquitos mm. and they are out of this world. Um, there they are. So they're nice and oven baked, oil free, super crispy, but the, um, the jackfruits roasted with both Chipotle adobo sauce and barbecue sauce shredded carrots, shredded tofu, and then rolled into a tortilla with beans and baked. And it has all the flavor that your typical, you know, shredded pork or carnitas would have and a similar texture. So I actually made those for my cookbook launch party. And this guy in my office, who's, we could not be more opposite. He eats hundred percent meat. He's very nice though. So I'm friends with him, but he came to my cookbook party and was kind of being a pest. Like I see you made one meat dish because otherwise no one would have come. And he's like eating it. Like, Oh, this is so good. I'm like, that's jackfruit, Betty. <laughs> and he was blown away and he's like a diehard meat lover. So that is hilarious that he would even think that I love yeah. it. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Nice. So tell us about what you have in the bundle. And if you've got a chance to look at some of the other books in the bundle and what intrigued you. Yeah, absolutely. So I, um, for the bundle, I have my four week rainbow detox meal plan as part of the bundle. It's a four week plan that focuses on eating every color of the rainbow. So I think, especially when you go plant-based, it's like, oh, there's so many different things. How do I combine things? How do I get more veggies and fruits into my diet? And this plan simplifies that. Um, it also, each week is broken down into colors. So the first week is green week. Second week is orange week third is yellow and fourth is red. So throughout those weeks, you're still eating multiple colors with a higher focus on one color of the food group. So um, it also is phenomenal for reducing waste and saving money. 
Every single week, it also includes a grocery list that's one click to order on Amazon Fresh or Instacart. And every single ingredient you buy, you're going to use all of. So no throwing away food at the end of the week. Um, the recipes in the plan will have, like today, for instance, we're making a quinoa carrot bowl with peanut sauce that has julienne carrots, but we're also making carrot cake overnight oats. So you'll see carrots in a couple of recipes throughout the week. You'll see kale in a couple of recipes out the, throughout the week. You'll see salsa in a couple of recipes. So you're using all of the ingredients in different ways um, to save money and minimize food waste and maximize your time in the kitchen. So that is what my plan is all about. Um, as far as the other things in the bundle, I have been blown away with Fraser Cooks. Um, his chef tips were fantastic. One of my girls, Better Food Guru, Sarah, she's amazing. I don't know if you know her. No, she's, that's what does she do? She is the salad queen. Oh, wow. Yeah, she's phenomenal. She um, she has a meal planner. So she included a three-month um, pass to her meal planner as part of the bundle. And it's a it's typically retails, I think, at $20 a month or maybe $20 per quarter. But it um, you can go in and pick the recipes you want for each meal of the day. And then it also generates a grocery list. But her recipes are off the charts, like really hearty filling salads, um, healthier kind of comforting foods. Um, she went viral for her no mayo pasta salad. And if you guys don't follow her on Instagram, she's a hoot, like her voiceovers. She's always telling these great stories about her plant-based journey. And she's actually a, um, her background is as a professional chef as well. Same with Fraser. So those are probably what, the ones I'm most excited about. Wow. Well, she, she sounds great. What's her name? Maybe she'll be on the show someday. Um, her name's Sarah and her handle is Better Food Guru. Wow. Yeah, she's cool. Nice. I'm glad you had a chance to look at it. That meal planner thing. I, I I must have missed that. So I'll have to get that. Yeah, definitely do. What are you most excited about in the bundle? Well, I love Lissa's books. And so I already had the wrap book, but now I have the taco book and I'm going to be able to make the low fat uh, fake meat crumbles out of carrots. And I'm going to oh. actually do that today. I was hoping to do it before you know, the show, but I didn't have time, but I love that. Okay. I have to check that out. I missed that one. Well, her wrap book is phenomenal. If you like wraps, they're, they're low fat, low calorie density made out of things like onions and zucchini, really, really quite delicious. Oh, great. I'm going to have to look that up. Yeah, it's called the hand salad book by Lissa Maris. Oh, yes, I did see that. The hand salad. Okay. Yeah. I definitely saw that. That was a really um, eye-catching one too. Nice. Well, what are you going to make? We are making four recipes today. Wow. So we are going to kind of take a look at what an entire day of eating looks like on my rainbow detox meal plan during the orange week. So I'm going to be making a breakfast, lunch, snack, and dinner. Um, and probably not in that order based on time. So <laughs> we're going to start with um, getting our sweet potatoes ready to roast for the um, sweet potato taco salad. It's only seven ingredients. And what I love about this plan is every single recipe is 30 minutes or less. And most of them have like 10 ingredients or less. So we're talking easy, accessible recipes that um, you're going to prep. And for instance, this one that we're making here, I think it has either two or three servings, probably three. Um, so one's going to be your dinner on, I think, Wednesday night. And then you're going to have one leftover for Friday lunch. And, you know, you're repurposing these meals so you're not always cooking all the time and you're saving food waste. So I, uh, I'm going to start with roasting the sweet potatoes and we're going to jump into the lunch, breakfast, and snack. So one thing, and I'm sure you get this question a lot about being oil-free is how do you roast or saute? And I don't know about you, but I personally feel like um, now that you are used to it, it's quite easy, especially for roasting. For sweet potatoes, I like to drizzle them with either coconut aminos or lemon juice to add a little bit of moisture, but I also oftentimes roast without any added liquid and they turn out fantastic and just as crispy. Yeah, I completely agree with you, you know, and um, I I've roasted in balsamic vinegar, which you're going to get two free bottles for appearing on the show. It's delicious roasting things like Brussels sprouts in balsamic vinegar. Absolutely. Thank you. I'm delighted. Yeah. Um, so I've sprinkled these with a little bit of uh, the coconut aminos and then some chili powder. And I personally like to salt my veggies after they're roasted. I think it kind of improves the texture and event prevents too much moisture from escaping during the roasting process. So 
those spread on the baking sheet here. So these are gonna be one of the main ingredients in our taco salad for these bowls. Um, and this is the only ingredient in this recipe that you have to cook. So the recipes are written like many, where while this these are roasting, you spend that time preparing your other few ingredients. Again, there's only seven. So we're gonna pop those in the oven. You were married in France. Yeah. Tell us about that. That sounds very romantic. It really was. Um, you know, my husband and I, neither of us really wanted a big wedding. And we actually got engaged in France. He proposed when we were over there just on a trip one year. And we were sitting on this beach the day we got engaged. We were watching the sunset, drinking a bottle of rosé. And we both were like, why don't we just get married right here? Like, this would be awesome. Like, we'll have our immediate family, us. It's going to be simple memorable and special. And um, that's really what we intended to do. <laughs> and then the more people we told, the more people wanted to come. And we ended up having 52 people there, uh, pivoting on the venue just slightly. So people have places to stay and that we had places to dine. But it was uh, a four day, three or four day event with some of our closest friends and family members in one of the most beautiful places I've ever been. So That's incredible. You got that many people to travel all the way there. Yeah, it was wild. And it's one of those things where some of the people that we really wanted to come or like expected or hoped to come couldn't, which you kind of got to expect with the destination wedding. But then some people who we never thought would make the journey came over for it. So it was, it was really cool and uh, such a way to have an intimate time with, your closest people during such an important event. So that is cool. Were Thank you were, were you vegan at the time you got married? I was not. I was like, again, my entire life I was pretty much pescatarian. So, but I'll tell you what, I never ate more cheese than when I was in France, and I had so many breakouts. Like my entire face was like bumps after being there. <laughs> so it was actually right after our wedding that we went vegan for 30 days. That's so cool. Yeah. But we did have a lot of, we started the, um, the event with a cocktail hour naturally, and we had two different types of gazpacho, fresh grilled asparagus with lemon. It, a lot of our menu was plant-based. So. That's great. Thank How long you. ago was that? What was that? How long ago was that? That was five years ago. Wow. Yeah. So, um, okay. I'm going to step away from the sweet potato taco salad and jump into the carrot peanut quinoa bowls. So the, the base of these is massage kale. And there are a couple different recipes that you'll see throughout the plan. I love massage kale. I don't, what is your favorite green for recipes? Hmm. Oh, oh my gosh. Well, I like baby kale more than regular kale because I feel really? like it's a little bit milder, you know, but I really do like arugula too. Oh, I love arugula. Do you massage your kale? Of course. They got to okay. give it some love. <laughs> um, I I could eat massage kale for like every meal, I swear. It is um, one of my most favorite things. And I think, especially if you're being massaged with lemon juice, it has such a nice, fresh and um, delightful flavor that really enhances any dish. And for my um, followers or readers that are looking for more of a low carb option or a lighter option or less grains for one meal of the day, I oftentimes encourage them to, and one thing this plan talks about is filling at least half your plate with greens. So that's something that I find to be really helpful for people looking for weight loss, but still sustaining with lots of filling ingredients because there is such a low caloric density. So replacing half of the rice or pasta in the dish you're eating with a green like massage kale, um, that's still super satisfying because it is pretty hearty, but um, just having that in your piece. So I've gone ahead and removed the spine of the kale and we'll fold them up extra nice for the chopping. And as you mentioned, you could use baby kale for this. You could use arugula, spinach, mixed greens, um, but kale is just a favorite of mine. 
especially tusk and kale. Yes. I love the purple one too, because it's so pretty. Yes, I do too. You know what that one's called? Is it just purple kale? Oh my gosh, I think it has a name. I if anybody knows it, put it in the chat. It's not the emerald kale, I don't think. This one, I know it's like Tuscan kale, Lacinto kale, Dino kale. This one has like 10 names. So put that in there. You know, somebody gave me broccoli leaves yesterday. I don't know if you ever had them. I, I didn't even know broccoli had leaves, but it looks a lot like a bunch of kale. So I'm probably going to treat it like kale. Yeah, please let me know how it is. I don't think I've ever tried that intentionally. So adding lemon juice to your kale definitely tenderizes it and adds a little bit of natural sweetness. Um, I always keep a discard bowl right on the counter where I'm cooking. That way you don't have to keep running over to the trash can or the compost bin. And then it's also really easy if you do have a compost bin to take that right outside um, and just make one dump. So lemon juice on the kale there. And sometimes I'll add a little mashed avocado or tahini as well, just to add a little extra slip and make it um, nice and rich and tenderized. But you just want to massage the leaves until they become more visibly tender and a little bit shiny. Rinse my hands here really quick. Your kitchen is just beautiful. Thank you. Um, we moved into our house about a year and a half ago. And we've been looking for a while. And honestly, some of the biggest deal breakers for houses that we liked was the kitchen wasn't great or it couldn't even be great had we renovated it or the lighting was bad. And we walked into this house and we're just like, okay, this couldn't be better. We just love it. So, um, I am going to next make the peanut sauce for this bowl. Peanut sauce, I think, is another amazing thing to introduce to people that are going plant-based to add flavor. So I love to use spices, peanut sauces, green goddess sauces, citrus, garlic herbs. Those are, I feel like, are some of the best ways to add flavor. And oftentimes for a low fat option, I will make this with PB2 pure, PB2 fit, whichever one is just organic peanuts powdered without any sugar or oils or anything. Um, but in my meal plan, it uses regular peanut butter. So that's what we're using today. When you substitute PB2 for peanut butter, is there an exact ratio that you need to follow? I usually recommend doing an exact swap and then adding up to you know, adding one tablespoon of water at a time until you re reach the desired consistency. Thank you. That was maple syrup. Gonna aminos here, rice vinegar, and my favorite, sriracha or chili garlic sauce, whatever you prefer. I'm a big spice lover. How about you? I do. And I'm not too, too spicy, but I do like some spice, some yeah. heat. And then, of course, I mean, I feel like in almost every recipe I make, I include citrus. So we're going to do some lime juice to go with this peanut sauce. Just adds such a nice brightness and fresh flavor. So here. And you can also do this in a blender if you prefer. I usually just mix by hand for time's sake and do your dishes, but either works great. Okay, our sauce is ready. And now we are going to assemble the three servings of this dish, which, um, this is such a great one for meal prepping and it holds up really well. The kale 
unlike other greens, it stays nice and hearty and fresh, doesn't get wilted or anything throughout the week. You can massage it in advance. And I feel like it just gets more and more flavorful. Yeah, it really, it, compared to lettuce, greens like that really stand up. Yeah, they do. They become like a interesting part of the meal instead of a, you know, limp carrier. <laughs> yeah, because regular salad, once you dress it, you really, it's not so great after that. Yeah, exactly. So we have that there. Oh, Julie and the carrots. Forgot one important step. So I like to use a julienne peeler and you could also just shred these or chop them, whatever works for you. But this just creates nice ribbons for the bowl and a really just beautiful presentation. You could also use a mandolin or a food processor for this. What other tools do you like? Do you have an instant pot? Do you have an air fryer? I'm kind of a classic girl. I don't have either. Oh my goodness. I am like a retro uh, pressure cooker that I use for making red beans and rice and a Vitamix. That's about it. How about you? Yeah, like I, I'm obsessed with kitchen gadgets and appliances. I mean, I had to get a bigger house just to fit all. When I lived in the apartment, you know, I lived in a very small apartment when I lived in Los Angeles, and like there were pressure cookers and air fryers on the floor. But I do, I do love things that make it fast and easy. Yeah. But um, you know, but I was still able to. You know, I've been vegan almost 50 years. I was able to do it before I even heard of a pressure cooker and air fryer. Right. Now, now that they exist, I'm going to definitely. Why not? Yeah. My problem is where to store all these things. Yeah. Well, it looks like you got a lot of cabinets. True, but they're already filled with all kinds of stuff. But yeah, yeah. it's funny. I don't even have a crock pot, which um, I guess oh, is kind those of like. Are, yeah, I like it, those. But anytime we always have like a chili cook off at my office and I always make a vegan chili, obviously. Um, last year it tied for first against six meat chilies. And this year it got second place. But um, I don't even have a crock pot for that. Like someone else has to loan me one. And they're like, aren't you, don't you do this for a living? I'm like, yeah, but. Oh, that's funny. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's good though that, you know, cause then you can show people, Hey, I don't have these tools and I make yeah. it. Work and cause I don't know about you. And I guess this probably wouldn't be the case for you since you have most of these things and love them. But there's times where I look at a recipe and it's like, Oh, get out your Instapot or your you know, air fryer. And I'm like, Oh, on to the next one. I don't have that. Like I want everyone to be able to make my oh, recipes. And it, it, I love the, when, when, when I love when there's options for people. So I for always sure. say, even in my book, if you don't have an instant pot, you can use a crock pot, but realize it's going to take eight hours longer, you know, yeah. that's the only <laughs> thing or even on the stove, but I just find them. They're very, very convenient. Yeah. So I don't, I know you probably haven't had time to watch the show before, but one of the questions that every guest gets, and you can answer it now or later, is what do you eat in a day? Ooh, okay. On any given day, right now I'm just adding quinoa to the bowls, by the way. Um, I typically start my morning with a smoothie. I love Blendtopia smoothies. I don't know. Have you heard of those? No, I haven't. They're fantastic. They're these smoothie kits. They're all organic, um, totally plant-based, and they are ready to blend just with water or plant-based milk. And I usually add um, protein powder as well, but they are based with functional medicine in mind. So they are um, filled with superfoods like flax seeds, hemp seeds, you know, maca, matcha, different um ingredients to boost your nutrition and they taste delicious. So most days I have one of those, otherwise tofu scramble or um, oatmeal. And then my lunch typically looks something exactly like this. When I made this meal plan, I actually, these are all recipes that I eat every single day. This is how I cook in my former life um, up until five, six years ago, I worked about 60 hours a week at a salon as a colorist. 
and I would have about five minutes to eat lunch. I'd be there at 7.45 in the morning. I'd have five minutes to eat lunch at some point throughout the day. And then I wouldn't get home until 8.30 at night. And so I developed this meal plan based around that. If you don't, if you want to maximize your time and efficiency, um, what does that look like? And this is that plan. So hearty bowl for lunch with lots of grains, um, greens, protein. And then dinner is usually a curry or a stir fry or pasta or another salad. Um, and I don't have a huge sweet tooth, but the chocolate covered mandarins I'm going to make today are one thing that I definitely love. So um, as you can see here, our sauce is ready. So what I would typically do is separate this into three little containers. These are all um, ready to be packaged up. You have your quinoa, chickpeas, carrots, and massage kale. And then when you open it up at your desk or your office or wherever you are at home, you can just pour on the dressing and it's ready to eat. Yum. Yes, these are a favorite. So, and they look pretty in the fridge too, all lined up with their rainbow colors. You look very fit. Do you have an exercise routine? Thank you. Um, you know, I work out about four days a week, I'd say, doing, and I just work out at home. Honestly, the times that I have, um, one second, found myself like overexerting with super high intensity, hour long workouts, five days a week. I actually gain weight and I'm not just talking about muscle. Um, I feel like my body becomes so famished that I'm overeating um, to kind of keep up. So I do, um, and on my Instagram, I have links to it and on my very small YouTube channel as well, but um, Growing Ananas, Sammy Clark, um, who else do I do? Eleni Fit, Pamela Reef. Those are my four like favorite girls. And I just do like one of their 20 to 30 minute workouts about four days a week and lots of walking. Um, but honestly, I'm the most fit when I focus on what I'm putting into my body, as I'm sure you've realized as well, um, that it's really about what you eat. I feel like what you eat and how much you eat determines the size of your body. And then your workouts kind of determine how lean or muscular you are but it's majority what you're eating. Yep. If you're like an active person, like walking around, if you have a semi-active job, if you're taking your dog on walks and eating super healthy, you're going to, chances are you'll be pretty darn fit. Yeah. Okay. On to our next recipe. Let's do the oats next. So um, I mentioned I don't have a sweet tooth, but one dessert I absolutely love, one of the only ones is carrot cake. Oh, so, nice. I'm curious if you don't have a sweet tooth, what tooth do you have? A salt tooth, a fat tooth, <laughs> a chips and salsa tooth. That's what I have. I would rather eat chips and salsa for dessert than eat dessert. Same. I would, I'd probably pick chips <laughs> guacamole um, and like corn tortilla chips. Like I love corn tortilla chips with guac or salsa, but I do not love potato chips. Like I don't have a salty tooth either. I have like bread I guess bread and chips and salsa you have a flower tooth yeah I think yeah, I, I, you, we, I don't know if you have this because you, you live in Iowa right yes I don't know if you do you have Whole Foods there or oh, yeah okay so there's a brand called um Mi Rancho and what I love about them they have a brand called a, a, a type of their corn tortilla that's called Thin Credible and I love them not because they're less calories which they are but because they're so thin when you make chips out of them they're they're just like so good and I I, I that's what I love about the air fryer because five minutes I, I got like a huge yeah. amount of chips you know you might have me sold on an air fryer, but yeah. Well, I mean, this would be the time. There's the sales are there. They're like yeah, true. 25 percent off. So no kidding. What is the base of those tortillas that you like so much? Um, I don't have any in the house, but I'm pretty. I'll, I'll look it up. I'm pretty sure it's just corn. I don't think there's anything bad in them, but I'm gonna look it up right now and tell you. I think I've tried those before, um, and they are very, very good. Yeah, those are like the rolled oats and some water here. Water, whole white corn, organic yellow corn, masa flour, trace of lime, and organic guar gum. Oh, 
that sounds great. And that fits your clean vegan. Yeah. I've been on, um, my favorite tortillas are the Maria and Ricardo's. They're technically like a keto tortilla because they're just almond flour, but they like, I'll show you actually. Um, I made pozole last night with jackfruit and hominy um, ancho chili peppers, but I roasted, can you see, can you see how crispy these are? Like, can you hear that? <laughs> like they're so crispy wow. and these almond flour tortillas that I just um, roasted or baked plain. I didn't put any oil on them, nothing. And they get so crispy in 10 minutes. They have great flavor. They're just delicious. So that's cool. I love pozole. I, I, you know, I don't ever make it, even though I have so many recipes. I like when it's made for me. Yeah. All right. I like when everything's made for me, to be honest. Yeah, no kidding. Um, do you like red pozole or pozole verde? Oh gosh, I like them both. You know, I what I love about it, I think, is that you get to put all those little toppings on top yeah. when you eat it, and kind kind of like fa. I love customizing my food. Totally, me too. Um, here's the carrots for the oats. And then this one's kind of fun because um, I don't know about your carrot cake recipes, but I put crushed pineapple in mine. So I am using crushed pineapple here as well um, to add natural sweetness to the oats. So you don't have to add any maple syrup or sugars or anything. They're just um, naturally sweet. Little vanilla. Cinnamon. What kind of vanilla do you use? I'm going to get you obsessed with my favorite vanilla, which is called vanilla bean powder. Ooh, well, I have vanilla bean powder, um, but I use the Simply Organic Madagascar vanilla. What do you use? I use vanilla bean powder in place of vanilla for any recipe calling for vanilla. It's so rich and just there's so much depth of flavor in it. I just couldn't go back to the liquid extract after I was introduced to it. I am with you. And it's funny because we actually, um, we use vanilla bean powder in our coffee. Like in the morning when it's steeping, we put it in the Chemex. Like Very in the clever. So it infuses there, but I, and I have a ton of it, but I've never used it. Is it a one-to-one -one swap in baking? I do. I mean, when you Google that, they say you can use less up because it's more intense, but I've always done one-to-one. -one. Okay. Well, good to know. Yeah. Um, in my meal plan, you'll notice this recipe is actually, it's like stovetop oats, like you're cooking them um, in about five minutes, but we're going to do an overnight oat technique with the same recipe here. I love food in jars. It's so pretty. I know. Something about being able to see it and just how easy it is to transport. I just love it. I think that helps help people when they eat healthy, especially if there's less healthy eaters in the house, put all their stuff in dark plastic containers so you can't see it and put all your stuff in glass so that when you open the fridge, you see the rainbow. Yeah. Do you follow um, Kristen? Hello. Uh... Yeah, she's been on the show twice. I love her. She doesn't live too far from me. I hope she'll come to one of our events. Okay. So you're not in LA anymore. Where are you? Are you in? Oh my God. I've bounced around. So I was in LA for 59 years. I moved to the desert near Palm Springs for three and a half years. And now almost two years I've been in the uh, Sacramento area, but I'm not in Sacramento. I'm like far from Sacramento. I'm in what's called uh, Roseville, West Roseville. So okay. it's very different than Sacramento, but it's close enough. And there's, I moved here because there's like there's like literally 9,000 vegans and I'm not kidding you because there's a wow. vegan society that has about eight. And then I started my own meetup group and we have over a thousand. And I just didn't, I just wanted to spend my final years among community of people that ate like me and thought like me. And also I wanted yeah. to be a doctor. So I, that's why I came up here because uh, Dr. Neil Nedley runs the Weimar Institute and he's my medical doctor. And yeah, it's, it's too cold, but other than that, I have no complaints. So, you know, Tony and Michelle, I'm sure. So I, I, I've only know Tony from her being on the show and she lives close, but I guess maybe Super she's, close. Sure she doesn't seem to want to come to stuff. But when you say Michelle, Michelle, who? World of vegan. 
I don't. Where does she live? I'd love to meet her. Same place. They're like 10 minutes from each other. Wow. Well, if you'd like to introduce me, we we just had a wonderful meetup yesterday with almost 100 people. We rented an auditorium in a school and we had a band and it was like unbelievable. Wow. That sounds incredible. It's really yeah. fun. I mean, these, these vegans up here, they know how to party. I'll tell you. It's, I love it. <laughs> I mean, they, they get together like, I mean, they get together every Wednesday for lunch at one of the vegan restaurants, every Saturday for dinner, every Friday for dinner. It's like, you just, I can't get my work done because I'm always partying with the vegans. I love it. Okay, so here's your two breakfasts ready to go for the week. I topped it with some plain unsweetened Coco June um, organic yogurt, which I love. It is so creamy and thick and delicious. And then we're going to put those in the fridge. They'll thicken overnight or really within about an hour and be ready to go. Oh, my sweet potatoes are ready. So that's perfect timing. Oh, and they're perfectly crisp. No oil needed. So if you can see. Beautiful. Do you have the um the other color sweet potatoes there? Like I love the white sweet potatoes. White, purple, yeah. You bet. I'll set these down right here while we hold a little Um, I'm kind of a classic girl. Like I just love an orange sweet potato or a yam, but the um, purple ones I love and the white ones. The white ones are so unique. Like they are yellow. They're just, um, I feel like they have a slightly sweeter flavor, but drier texture. Would you agree? I like them for that reason, that they're yeah. not mushy and that I, I love the white ones. I've eaten a white sweet potato or Hannah yam, whatever you want to call it, Jersey yeah. white, every day for lunch, about weighs about a pound and a half for, I don't know, 11, 12 years now. I don't get sick of it. I love it. And I eat it with broccoli, usually sometimes Brussels sprouts, but and sometimes a little California balsamic vinegar, uh -huh. sometimes just roasted, sometimes air fried. But I mean, I really love it. I mean, I when I have to go away, like I miss it. I just love it so much. It's so, so sweet potato and broccoli. That's your lunch. Do you eat anything else with it? Um, well, it's a huge amount though. It's because it's a pound of broccoli and it's like a pound and a half of sweet potato. So usually not. If I were still yeah. to be hungry afterwards, which usually I'm not, I'll have some fruit. Um, and if I get hungry between meals, I don't eat breakfast. I've never eaten breakfast, just never appealed to me to eat early in the morning. And yeah. but yeah, I mean, I'm very full. That's what I love about like eating oil free because my food, I, I get to eat more and I, I want to be food. able to eat more, you know? <laughs> I hear you for sure. Um, so for these taco salads, we're going to make a two ingredient. Well, you're adding two ingredients. The salsa has a few more, but you could make your own homemade salsa or buy store bought. I just have the Whole Foods fire roasted salsa here. Um, but we're just combining that same Coco June plain organic yogurt, which the only ingredients in this are organic coconuts, spring water, cassava root, and vegan probiotic cultures. So I love it. It's so clean. And then we're just going to add some salsa and you can um, kind of change the ratio depending on your desired preference, whether you want it to be creamier and more yogurt forward, or if you want it to be um, a little bit spicier, you can add more salsa accordingly. And that's going to be just a really delicious dressing or sauce on top of the taco salads we're about to make. I used to always make my own salsa and it's so easy. I have one, yeah. one of those pulley tools from Tupperware, but I get so lazy. I just end up buying it. So there is going to be salt in it and stuff, but I just, yeah. I'm, I'm a salsa fiend. I love the green salsa. I love the brown salsa. I love the red salsa. Totally. I, I love to make my own homemade salsa as well, but I, um, for things like this, where I'm mixing it with yogurt, I'm not as fussed about how, I was fussed about my starting point for taste preferences, but I do try to pick one if I am going store bought that has really clean ingredients. So yeah, right. A bit who's watching live says, "What percent of your pro diet would you estimate is protein?" I would not be able to answer that without doing putting it in now. 
Um, I don't have a percentage for you, but I, on average, I calculated it once and most days I'm getting between 60 to 80 grams of protein. Um, I don't know. I was just talking to Fritz Horstman about macros and micros and all the counting and I don't do any of that. Um, but I do try to eat protein forward. So I eat a ton of tofu. Like I, you said you can't get sick of sweet potatoes and broccoli. I cannot get sick of tofu. It is my favorite, one of my favorite foods, whether it's raw, roasted, steamed, baked, anything. Um, I just love it. So I try to make sure one of my meals every day has tofu in it. And I love to get the high protein, organic, super firm tofu, which you don't have to press it. It's just delicious. So I add that every day and I love it raw. I'm actually sharing a recipe tomorrow on my Instagram at Jack Ripple Kitchen um, that incorporates raw high protein tofu with um, cucumber, avocado, and a really nice oil-free vinegar vinaigrette that's just delicious and makes like a five minute salad. So that's something I do often. Um, protein powder, if I do do a smoothie in the morning and then tempeh or beans or um, TBP at night, just to get even a little bit more protein. I, I definitely add it to every meal. I would say. Nice. What did you do for Thanksgiving? Um, so this is funny that you asked for how old am I? 32 for 32 years. Uh, I have spent Thanksgiving with my parents and family. There's always about 25 of us at my parents' house. And I go over first thing in the morning and help my mom make pies and casseroles and salads. And um, this year, my mom had surgery and she wasn't up for hosting. She's totally fine. But um, we ended up going to my husband's sister's house up in Lake Minnetonka in Minnesota. And it was so sweet because they were very, very aware and thoughtful about every single thing they made except the turkey was vegan, which was really cool. And uh, my brother-in-law and I did, I'd say 99% of the cooking, but it was, we had a totally vegan Thanksgiving other than the turkey. So it was very, very fun. How about you? Um, oh my gosh. I had 35 people were invited, 31 showed up and it was potluck optional, but I still just cooked up a storm for days. And I was, I was so tired. Like I fell asleep in the middle of the dinner. I was cooking so much. I made just, I don't know, just so, you know, just the usual stuff, the mashed potatoes, yeah. maybe the cranberry sauce, but I, I made this like, um, I think I'm going to do a video and cause I want to have it again for Christmas, even though I don't really celebrate Christmas, but I'll make it like, because people love it. I yeah. it, like loaf and then I frost it with mashed potatoes and then serve it with, uh, the, gravy and the, it's just so good. I mean, I want to eat that. I, I never get sick of leftovers. There are people that don't like leftovers. I, I have a friend who's a chef for some celebrities in LA and they, they, no, they never will eat leftovers. And I'm thinking, give them to me. Cause I'd rather eat leftovers than the first time, because as it gets dried out, I yeah. like it better. It's funny. I agree. And I also I actually had out of everyone that's bought my meal plan, I've gotten one bad review. And she was like, I can't believe every single meal every day isn't a new recipe. And I'm like, who has time for that? Like what working individual has time to make a brand new recipe for breakfast, lunch, dinner, snack, dessert? Like this plan is supposed to kind of intentionally make two servings for every recipe so that you can strategically use leftovers and spend less time in the kitchen. But um, yeah, I thought that was kind of interesting. Because I'm with you. I love them. But I'm shredding some red cabbage right now. This is, I love to use a Y peeler to shred cabbage because it gets that really fine shred, which is so nice. I just love the texture of it. That's what we're doing here. So I've topped the romaine lettuce um, with the black beans, no salt added black beans. And I just... I love plain beans. Like I don't think they need a lot of action other than, you know, the yogurt sauce we're going to add on top will be a nice touch, but I don't season or add any salt to the canned beans themselves. And preferably I would make them pressure cooked, but I do love an organic, no salt added canned bean. I'm going to add the sweet potato here.
So when you have your sweet potato for lunch every day, do you steam it or? Oh, no, no, no. I am. Uh, that's one thing. I'm a, I'm a sweet potato snob. I do not care for sweet uh, for steamed sweet potatoes. And when I go to Rancho La Puerta, this resort in Mexico, I they that's how they cook them. And I don't like wet, mushy food. That's why I don't like oatmeal. I don't like, like, so no, I roast them. I roast them at 400 degrees on the roast function of the Breville, not even in my oven. And then I don't poke them because I find when I poke them, you know, they exude the juice and it's messy. So I just, I learned this from Chef Bravo at True North, just tiny little bit of the tip cut off at each side, then the steam escapes. And, I, and because they weigh about two pounds before cooking, I cook them for about 90 minutes and then I chill them. And then each day I you know, microwave them or sometimes they air fry them, but mostly just, I just love the creaminess and the subtle sweetness of the vanilla hints of the white sweet potato with the, with the little tiny bitterness of the broccoli. I mean, I, I, I love lunch. I mean, I, I can't wait to eat it because it's yeah. right after the show. So it's like my favorite, it's my favorite meal because I haven't eaten since yesterday. So what kind of peeler, um, Michelle? Are you asking what kind of peeler she's used was using, or the or the yeah. uh, the, the julienne? It's a julienne peeler. Is this one is actually peeler. just a Y peeler. Oh, just a Y so, peeler. Okay, um, it's just a yeah Y peeler, and I love to use that for the cabbage. As you can see, it's like so finely shredded, and makes it really nice for eating. So there is your dinner. I don't know if you guys can see this without me tipping the sauce but roasted sweet potatoes, cabbage, black beans, romaine, and then that yummy um, yogurt sauce, spicy yogurt sauce that we made from the two ingredients with the salsa and the vegan yogurt. So we've made our breakfast, lunch, and dinner for this week, for this day of Orange Week so far. And my last one, if you have a sweet tooth, this is gonna be for you. But not too much of a sweet tooth because it's still fruit. But I am going to be using um, sugar-free dark chocolate vegan chips with just a touch of coconut butter. Um, I'm going to go microwave those on 50% power to make a, a melt there. And we're going to dip my most favorite thing. Do you know about Sumo Citrus? I have tasted those. They're very good. They're huge. They're huge. They're enormously delicious. And um, we're going to dip sumo citrus slices into melted sugar-free dark chocolate and sprinkle it with chopped nuts for a healthy um, snack or dessert. So I'm going to pop this in the microwave really quick. How did you come to write a book? You know, um, they, Page Street Publishing was my publisher and they reached out to me. Uh, they sent me an email. They're like, hey, we saw you on Instagram. Have you ever wanted to write a vegan cookbook? And I, I was like, how much is this going to cost me? Is this a scam? Like, I'm not interested. I didn't respond. That's and amazing that, that that happened. I mean, that I don't yeah. get that often. That's really cool. It was quite flattering. And then they reached out again. They're like, hey, we're actually serious. So um, I had a call with them. And, you know, I was, I only wanted to write a book on two conditions. I didn't, sorry, I have a sticker in here. From Renewal Mill. Are you familiar with Renewal Mill flowers? No. Oh my no, gosh. They're, they're a um, carbon neutral company. All of their flowers are upcycled. So like their oat flour actually has like 30 grams of protein per serving because they're using like a certain part of the oat that is higher in protein, but they have like baking mixes, almond flours, one-to-one -one gluten-free flours, wheat flours, I think. Um, but Renewal Mill is awesome. And they send you cute stickers. But my book, the things I was uh, most passionate about, I wanted a full-size photo for every single recipe. So every single recipe in my book, you're going to have a full picture. Because I don't know about you, but oftentimes if a recipe doesn't have a photo, I'm probably not going to make it. So I, I hear that. That was really important to me. And then, you know, initially when they were talking about concepts, they asked if I'd want to write like a vegan comfort food book or a whole book about vegan cheese. And I'm just like, those don't really, yeah, those, those aren't me. And so I'm like, I want to write a book about clean vegan food 
that tastes delicious, where you can have super creamy um, gnocchi with a sweet potato, sweet potato gnocchi, you'd probably, well, maybe, would you love this? It's not dry. <laughs> The soup potato gnocchi, it's pretty saucy. I think I would. It's not that I have to have everything dry. I just don't like things too too moist, if that, yeah. that makes sense. Or a um, bolognese sauce with pasta. I wanted all of these very indulgent-seeming recipes um, to be made with clean ingredients and prove to people that you can enjoy delicious food like Bang Bang Tacos with clean ingredients and feel amazing doing it. So that was how I came to writing a book. I'm going to grab that out of the microwave. Nice. Guys, just want, I just want everyone to know I have a bonus show today at 1.30 with another bundle contributor. So please come back for Dr. Elizabeth. Oh, exciting. Yeah. Um, one of my favorite things about Sumo is how easy they are to peel. Not only are they enormously delicious and fantastic, they also peel incredibly easily. So um, they're not in season yet. They'll be hitting stores near you in January. So stay tuned. Okay, grab that chocolate. Have you heard of HU chocolate chips? They're date sweetened. They're pretty cool. Yeah, I've had those. I really like those. Yeah. Do they melt nicely? Yeah, they do. Yeah, that's always a big thing for me. So this is another one of those treats that you can um, make in advance. And every single one of the weeks in my meal plan includes a healthier dessert. Um, one week's an avocado chocolate mousse. One is, actually, this isn't even the dessert. This is the snack for the day. But one other this week's is a pumpkin peanut butter cookie, grain free. So we're going to dip each one halfway in chocolate. And then um, they're meant to be enjoyed throughout the week to kind of satisfy a sweet craving, but kind of curb. I feel like when people cut out processed refined sugar, um, they kind of stop having the distracting sweet tooth cravings that they're used to and they're satisfied with eating fruit or a naturally sweetened or date sweetened product that they won't be reaching for the candy bars or the the cookies after dinner um that's kind of the purpose of having these in each week of the meal plan is to satisfy those people with a sweet tooth you could probably use a different fruit too, if you wanted to, right? Like a banana or a strawberry. Absolutely. Apples. Ooh, apples. Blueberries would be delicious. What I, Whenever I'm doing anything with melted chocolate and I have leftover melted chocolate, um, I'll just fill this up with blueberries, stir them, and then put little clumps on the parchment paper. Um, and I do like to sprinkle them with just a touch of sea salt. So we're going to sprinkle these with chopped nuts. Put them in the fridge and they are ready for a afternoon sweet treat. That is beautiful. Thank you. I love it. So we have the taco salad, the chocolate covered mandarins, the overnight carrot cake oats, and the carrot quinoa peanut bowls. This is what a full day of eating looks like on one day during the orange week of my rainbow detox meal plan. That is beautiful. And that is worth the price of the bundle, which guys, it'll only be available for nine more hours. If you go into the show notes, you can buy it from Jackie. Her link is right there. And then you'll get also another $1,300 worth of wonderful vegan and plant-based content, books, eBooks, that is courses, videos, apparently an app or a, what you said about your- Meal planner. 
Yeah, meal planner. So amazing, amazing. Well, you were just a wonderful presenter and I really enjoyed watching you make these, everything you made looks delicious and I will eat the oats. It's just, yeah, because they, I just, just don't like things mushy. Sorry about that, but. Well, I'm the same way. I think overnight oats are a little bit better because they don't get as mushy. Yeah. They're yeah. more toothsome. Yeah. They, they don't taste like pablum. So it's yeah. <laughs> amazing. So uh, other than uh, getting your offering in the bundle, how else can people connect with you, follow you? Where do you, uh, where do you spend most of your time? Yeah, thank you so much. And this has been such a treat getting to know you and being on your show. So I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, I, the best way to keep in touch is to go to Instagram, Jack Fruitful Kitchen or to jackfruitful.com. And if you go to my website, um, there'll be a pop-up that invites you to subscribe. And twice a week, I send out new recipes, um, tips and tricks, exclusive content that way as well, discounts on my meal plan, things like that. So those are definitely the two best ways to stay in touch. And then my book, The Clean Vegan, um, is available on Amazon or anywhere books are sold. So Great. Well, thank you so much. And somebody's asking, is this a new bundle? So the plant-based bundle is completely new. Most of the content. So I do a bundle myself in the fall, in the, in the spring, actually, with Lissa Maris of Raw Food Romance. And if you'd like to join it, Jackie, we'd love to have you as a contributor. You're yeah. absolutely fabulous. I'll get that information to you. So we do not have repeats. We don't accept repeats, at least repeats that have been in our bundle. Whereas the plant-based bundle, a small percentage is, which is why I click on the link, look and compare. But there is enough new stuff that most people are still anxious to buy it because Lissa's wrap book wasn't in it last year year, her new taco book and all kinds of stuff. So that yeah, full disclosure that you have nine hours left to buy. So what do you have planned for the rest of your day? I am going to shoot a couple recipes here. And then uh, the first of the month, I always send out a newsletter that's a little bit more of a kind of a recap of the previous month, what you can expect in the following month, a few different products I'm loving. And that goes out Friday. So I'm going to work on that. How about you? Great. Well, I've got one more show at 1.30 with another bundle contributor. And then um, then I'm free. I need a turtleneck. So I'm thinking, I, where can I need a, it's so cold here. I need one that goes all the way up. And so I've yeah. got one on Amazon and I, I just want things to be very warm and very soft. And so maybe I'll go to a, a turtleneck store if I can find it. <laughs> I wish there is, if there is such a thing. Well, it's such a pleasure meeting you. Thanks so much for being on the show. People are saying it was a great show and they enjoyed it. So yeah, please come back again. And if you know, I'd love to have you back. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. And it's been a treat. I really enjoyed it. Thank you so much, Jackie. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. I'm going to have a quick lunch. Be back right here at 1.30 with Dr. Elizabeth. You're not going to believe how somebody actually my age looks so amazing eating this way. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.